won the crown. start in just a few minutes and uh, we have have maybe some on YouTube and maybe four or five with us on on Zoom.
Lord God is in his holy temple. Let all of the earth keep silent before him. Our Father God, we thank you for another blessed worship praise opportunity to say hallelujah to your glorious, magnificent name. We thank you for the miraculous only begotten son who died on Calvary's cross, holy for us. And we come, O oh God, to pray into this church to say how great thou art. We thank you for our lying down. We thank you for our early rising. We thank you for the food, the clothes on our back. Thank you for the, the breath of air. Continue to breathe on us, your spirit, your love, your affection, your abundance, and your grace and mercy, for which we are indeed grateful. Words cannot express our gratitude. And Father, we now pause in humility to ask for forgiveness of our, our sins. David said transgressions, iniquities, and sins, all of which we are guilty, omission as well as commission. But nevertheless, O oh God, we're, we're in the palm of your hands. Thou art the, thou art the, thou art the pauper, we are the clay. Mold us, shape us. Bless every home. Tune in this morning. Bless it from where we are broadcasting from. Bless the table. Bless their food. Bless their lives. Oh God, we just come to worship you. Receive our gifts, our tithes and offerings. Hear our meditations, our prayers. And they extend down to us after you hear them. Send a message from on high. Again, we thank you for Jesus who sits on the right hand and makes amends, reconciliations for us. We thank you for those that are shared in this morning and blessings upon every home, every family. Hear their prayers, the sick among us, the bereaved, the forgotten, the lonely. Pray none feel forsaken. Help us to be, oh God, receive your mission more and more, be more of what you want us to be. Forgive our inadequacies, and oh God, crown us with wisdom, crown us with love, compassion, understanding, concern, and commitment for the lost. We pray for the unsaved everywhere. Pray for the broken homes. Pray for the hospitals. And oh God, in such a pandemic time, the world is in desperate need of you. Oh God, we ask for healing of all conditions. Healing from sin, healing from sickness, healing from spiritual lack of obedience to your, to your law. Our Father, we need you. Continue to guide us and be with us every step of the way. And our Father, we pray now for peace all over this world. In Afghanistan, in the deserts, in the wilderness, the wildernesses of Dallas County, the wilderness of Selma, the wilderness of Alabama, United States, the wilderness in the White House as well as in the Poor House, the wilderness is behind prison bars. Oh God, only you can make a difference. Your divine word, your presence, and we ask you in the mighty name of Jesus, the word, the prayer of your servant. We ask it to come into this worship as we worship you in spirit. And, oh God, we worship you in truth, for you are the truth. In Jesus' precious, miraculous, incomparable, magnificent name, we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. We thank God for another worship chance. We thank you for joining in with us today virtual. Uh, we, we come virtual today and to share. We're going to share now the scripture reading. If you would, assemble your Bibles, uh, familiar message. We'll also in, entertain this on Wednesday night 
in Bible study is coming from the book of Exodus, uh, the Ten Commandments, chapter 20. If you would, our attention today shall be from verses 1 through 17, as we shall focus on it and ask you to read them during the week before Sunday, before Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Chapter 20 of Exodus, we commence with verse 1 through verse 17. We appreciate all of you joining in with us, and if you would, just uh, mute your microphones at home so that there will not be any background noise to interfere with the uh, the worship integrity of others. We thank you so much, and uh, and just glad to have glad to have all those on Zoom as well as on YouTube. If you're able in your homes, I ask you to just stand as we share the reading of the, the divine holy word. Again, from the book of Exodus, uh, chapters one through uh, seven seventeen. I'm going to read them and ask you to just read them uh, along with me. I'll be using the King James tradition, and uh, you share in with us. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Uh, commandment 1 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers, watch this now, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Amen. Commandment next says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Commandment now says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He explains, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and in it thou shalt not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For I have given you six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, hallowed it. Continuing with the next commandment, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. You may be seated in your home. We thank you for the reading of the word. We'll look at that those words again on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock for uh, Bible study. And we just thank you for joining in with us at now. We're going to continue now with a hymn of praise. Uh, Reverend Colin Lett uh, will, will lead us. And you sing at home along with him if you're 
I know the word. So we're not here to entertain. We're here to worship. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, mute your, mute your microphones, so that, but sing it in your home, but mute your microphone so it will not interfere with others, please. Uh, we thank you. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Until I die, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust Amen. in the Lord. Hallelujah. I will trust Amen. in the Lord until I Fight and pray. I'm gonna watch, fight and pray. I'm gonna watch, fight and pray until I die. I'm gonna treat everybody right. I'm gonna treat everybody right. I'm gonna treat everybody right until I die. I'm gonna treat everybody right. Till I die. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna stay on stay. my bended knees. I'm gonna stay on my bended knees. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I'm gonna stay on my bended knees. Hallelujah. Until I die. All my days. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm Gonna stay on my bended knees. I'm gonna stay on my bended knees. I'm gonna stay on my bended knees until I die. Amen. I will trust. trust. Sing at home what you will. The Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Till I die. Say amen in your homes. Amen. amen. And say that you, I will trust in the Lord till I die. Amen. Amen. We'll come now to worship in, in uh, virtually and worship in tithes and offerings and, and just make a commitment to share and to give. Uh, well, during this time, we Thank you for those that have been sharing and giving, and and thank God uh, you've been faithful in worship, and uh, God has blessed the church. Amen. Yes. We, we want to remember, uh, as we prepare during this period of of uh, consecration, giving, sharing the, the sick, 
Well, remember the sick everywhere. And pray for the, the world. Peace. Pray for the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, people without homes, heartless, homeless. Pray for the streets of Washington, D.C., Chicago, New York City, even the streets of Selman, Dallas County. There's a wilderness everywhere. Remember Sister Sheila Parker, who's still continuing among us to recuperate at home. Uh, pray for her and her family. Remember Deacon Bryant and his wife, his lovely wife. They're continuing to recuperate. And, and she's thankful for those that have been calling her. And, and she expressed it. And to those that have even come by and have done some in-kind things for her and them around the house. She's most pleased and grateful. She expressed love and prayers to the church for the love. And, and she said it, I didn't, said that's what the church ought to be like, where they look out and show concern and care for one another. Remember Trustee Whit had been with us in about a year and a half. Pray for him. God will heal him. I don't need to tell you. You know my motto. All healing comes from God. And without God, and without God, there is no healing. We ask you to remember uh, Sister Rita Lett. Uh, been with us, been hospitalized this week. But I'm thankful to God that she's now home and uh, beginning to feel better. We ask, continuous, ask for continuous healing. And God will bless us. Uh, we will ask uh, Deacon McNeil to just pray briefly. Just a prayer of thanksgiving for the, for the gifts and for those that may be sick among us. Amen. Now, Father, we pray that I would receive our prayers. We raise them up to you. We thank you for your grace, your healing power. Continue to breathe on us. Yes. Breathe on us every day anew, yes. a new spirit, a new grace, a new mercy. In the mighty precious name, and all those that are listening, give us more commitment to go out and bring in the unsaved. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Again, we want to remind you, just 
couple of announcements and we'll be ready for the Sermonic Hymn and the Word of God. And Bible study again Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We, we're going to talk about those Ten Commandments that we just read. Those that may late tune in, we've, our scripture reading today from the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, the Ten Commandments. Join in with us in the same way you did this morning on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. And as we shared, the, the Ten Commandments, the law that God gave to the children of Israel as they came from Egypt out on Mount Sinai. Amen, amen. <clears throat> Next Sunday we'll be traveling over to the uh, Calvary Baptist Church uh, on Highway 22, right adjacent to Wallace, near Wallace College. Uh, those yeah. that are not familiar, it's going up 22, going north. It's, as soon as the four lane ends, the church will be immediately on the right. Amen. Yeah. If you're coming down 22. Uh, and we hope that you'll be able to join us. Uh, please yeah. join us with us. Our own Reverend Colin Lett has been invited to share. And we're going over to be with him. The service will begin at 10 o'clock. Uh, there will be no Sunday school, uh, so let us come at, uh, early if we can, 9.45. I will say that the crowd will probably be a little larger than we've had at Aimwell, and, uh, and uh, we're going to be there at that time and, and bring some special mass. You may have heard the word N95 uh, for larger gathering. They're more protective, and if you can get an N95 mass, Secure one for yourself, but we, since we'll be gathering in in a larger building, sanctuary, inside, and and people we may not necessarily be around, we're gonna provide some masks at the door for you, and they want us to come into the entrance near the carport. That's the side door. Uh, come in through that, uh, just for precautionary measures. Uh, that is their request from the church. We want to do all we can to comply. And uh, yeah. uh, we know that to preach word, uh, God will bless us in that. So that's next Sunday at 10 o'clock. No Sunday school. Let us try to congregate around 945. And we may be there and have the mask, a special mask, the N95. And we'll bring, we'll have, we'll have at least ample, I know, for Aimwell members and, and invite maybe someone to come with you. Uh, we're just glad to have you come and, and to share with us at 10 a.m. That's the Calvary, Calvary Baptist Church. They're, they're pastors, they're without a pastor at this point. And so we're going over to share in and in any way that we can, uh, Amen. You know, whatever they uh, re request us to do, we'll be, we'll be more than glad to do it. And, and let us continue to be safe in our home with the mask. That word N95, N is in the alphabet N, and 95 is more protective than uh, the regular, uh, I see a lot of light blue masks they're wearing. And they, with this virus, is may, it may not be as protective. So the N95, it, it tends to be a little more taut, uh, tight, um, but we'll, figure out a way how to make it easier, but it's much more protective against this COVID mut mutant virus uh, that has come upon us. Continue to pray for the church, pray for one another, uh, for the sick, the bereaved, the unsaved, especially the unsaved. Ask God. Use your influence. The prayers of the righteous, uh, the Bible says, availeth much. You, you worship God, and the Holy Spirit walks with you uh, every day. That's, uh, uh, you have great influence, the Holy Spirit. Theologians call him the paraclete. That's P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E. That means paraclete, the Holy Spirit. That means it walks with you, or walks beside you. Para means with or beside. And cleat, referring to God and the power of God walking with you. Amen. We want to share that with you today. 
We're going to continue now with the worship and the hymn of Sermonic Hymn. The messenger, the, our son, the Reverend Colin Lett, will bring the message now as we prepare. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for your gifts. Uh, I just want to remind you, we haven't had a, necessarily a church meeting business, but, but we're doing the business of the Lord every Sunday. Amen. Amen. I want to just remind those that are not aware that your generosity, the church does not owe any, anybody. No bills, no mortgage. The bankers thought we would take 10 years, uh, six years ago, to pay off the church. And your generosity ties and offering, you pay it off in, in less than three. Amen. Yeah. Because of giving. That speaks volumes of what God can do. And when people listen, amen. Uh, he's worthy to be praised. Amen. And God is blessed. We continue now. And just for a brief moment while he prepares, I want you to just pray in your seats where you are in home. I call it silent meditation, silent worship. He will, he will uh, serenade us for a few minutes. And then the message of praise from him. You pray in your home. Pray for America. Pray for the lost, the unsaved, the sick, the lonely, forsaken. Pray for yourself that you'll be stronger. God will continue to breathe on you that you can be a better person. Pray for everyone. Humble yourselves. Thank Him for health and strength. Thank Him. Thank Him for Jesus above all. The immaculate, the incarnate, the holy, righteous, sacrificial, only begotten Lamb of God. Oh, worthy, oh, worthy is the Lamb. Who is this Son of God? Who is this King of glory? The psalmist says, the Lord strong and mighty. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the host of mercy. A host for you of grace, of abundance. A host of forgiveness, of love, of sharing. A host of another chance, of reconciliation. A host that lies you down at night and wakes you up in the morning for a new day. A host that continues to breathe on you that you might be saved. A host that touches your family. A host that all over your home even while you slumber in another world and continues to watch on him. He's the paraclete that walks with you day in and day out. Pray to God. Thank him. Humble yourselves even when you're upright, walking in spirit. Ask God to continue in the meditation. Continue to meditate every day to God Almighty and he will hear your prayer I know I'm a believer
He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. is your name in all the earth. Lord, you are a wonder in our souls. We can't quite understand why a perfect God would love an imperfect people. We can't quite understand why a perfect God would love a people that continuously falls short. But Lord God, today we come and bow at your feet and say thank you. Thank you. For you are Elohim. You are the sovereign Lord. You are our creator. And it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. Thank you, Lord God, for Jesus the Christ, who died on Calvary's cross and shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Thank you, God, for raising him to new life that we might have new life and that abundantly. Thank you for your Holy Ghost, for you speak your holy and divine truth to us. You calm our fears. You help us to understand that we can continue to depend on you. Guide our footsteps, Lord. We, your church, your children have gathered that we might bless your holy name. Amen. That we might express our love for you. But Lord God, we realize that you first loved us. While we were yet sinners, you showed your perfect love for us. In that Christ died for our sins. And we bow today to say thank you. Lord God, we've come to feast on your word. Let your word penetrate our hearts. Let it change our very lives. Amen. Let it change the way we think. Let it change the way we talk. Let it change the way we treat each other. Let it change the way we operate in our daily lives. Lord God, let your word abide in us that your holy light might shine through us. And we'll be so careful to give you the praise. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord Christ, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Let every believer say amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, Aimwell. It's still, still morning for about 20 more minutes here in Alabama. <laughs> so we say good morning to you, and we uh, thank God for this wonderful opportunity to worship his holy name together Amen. we want to uh, direct your attention i know we've been preaching a lot from the new testament but we're going to direct your attention to the old testament today amen. amen and we will go to the book of prophecy 
um, Isaiah chapter 41. And I'll just read for you, hearing one verse as we meditate on God's goodness today. We just want to lift up one verse. We want to thank this fine pastor for this opportunity again as we uh, worship and stream from the, uh, the home studio sanctuary. Amen. 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 That we might be um, cautious in uh, making sure that everyone stays safe and healthy. But just one particular verse that some of you might find very familiar. And it's Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. I'll read it from the New Revised Standard Version. And it simply says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Amen. The, the text again says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid. Another translation might say, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. We just want to uh, meditate on this thought this morning as we uh, go through, continue to go through this COVID-19 pandemic. The reasons we overcome fear. The reasons we overcome fear. I am um, continuously bothered um, by <laughs> people that go through these extreme measures um, of expressing their fear. I do understand that we are in a pandemic and, and I, I encourage everyone to be careful. But I want us to operate out of carefulness but not operate out of fear and it seems to be something that bothers um, the Lord about our own human nature for if we sent out a scripture verse every day and just one verse at a time we could send a do not fear or be not afraid scripture verse every single day Fear seems to be the biggest obstacle for humans, for people of God, to operate in the will of God. Fear seems to just cripple us and bind us. But we have a reason that we can overcome our fear. The tech, this simple verse tells us five simple reasons that we don't have to worry and we don't have to fear. Uh, I'm reminding you that in 2 Timothy, God says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us this spirit of fear that so many of us operate in. I want us to be careful in this pandemic. I want us to go out and make sure we wear our mask and, and have our hand sanitizer. But we cannot live our lives in fear and anxiety. That's not what that's not what Jesus died for. <laughs> he didn't he didn't die for us to continue to be imprisoned in our own minds. He didn't die for us to be imprisoned in a situation. He wants us to be careful, but he wants us to continue to still be filled with faith. Beloved, if you don't understand the reasons that you can overcome fear today, I want to express to you that we can first overcome fear because of God's own presence. The text first says, do not fear, for I am with you. Uh, so many of us, we, are, we have forgotten because we see so many people getting sick among, among us. We see so many people freaking out among us and, and, and expressing themselves in fear. But I want to remind you today, beloved, that God 
is with you. Uh, you might not understand the greatness of, of this simple uh, clause that God has put in this, in this scripture text. But beloved, I want you to understand that in God's presence there is fullness of joy. Uh, Paul talks about it and he thinks about God's presence and he says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, uh, created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul was dealing with a, a bad situation. But he understood that the situation couldn't separate him from the love of God. I know we're in a pandemic and times are hard, but beloved, I want you to understand that God's presence is still with us. Ah, in the, in the book of Isaiah, the, the book starts off with 39 chapters of prophetic judgment. But the book takes a turn in chapter 40 and God is reminding his people that I am still your God. Yes, there will be a time of punishment. Yes, there will be hard times ahead. But after that, God is saying that I am still with you. Beloved, he told the children of Israel when, uh, when Moses took them to the Jordan and he was time for them to separate. Moses spoke to the children of Israel as they had to go on across the Jordan without him. He, he, he helped them to understand that they didn't get there because of him. But they got there because of somebody else. And he encouraged them, be strong and of good courage. He said, do not fear or be afraid of the things that are ahead. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. I don't care what your obstacle is, but beloved, I'm encouraged today because the Lord our God goes with us. And he will not leave us, nor will he forsake us. I don't care what, what variant it is, the alpha variant, the delta variant, the lambda variant, or whatever they might want to call it, but none of the variants of COVID-19 or none of the variants of systematic racism, none of the variants of hatred and pride can separate us from God. God is with us, and his presence goes with us to guide us, and he will never leave us nor forsake us, so we can't operate out of fear when we know that we got a God protecting us. I'm so glad today that we have uh, some examples to look at for David was in a bad situation. As a matter of fact, David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that means death was kissably close, but he, he understood that he had a protector. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will still Fear no evil. And he said it's because for thou art with me. And somebody ought to have that kind of faith today that you're not going to operate in fear, that you've got faith that no matter what comes, even if death is kissably close, that you not, will not fear because thou art with me. Because God's rod and his staff, they comfort us. Do I have a witness today that you are operating out of faith because of God's own presence? Not only is God's presence with us, but God is our God. Yes, the text goes on to say, do not be afraid, for I am your God. I've heard many scholars say that this is just a repeat of the first, cla of the first clause. But beloved, I want you to understand that God is going to some deeper implications there. It's not only that God will just be with you. But God is telling us that he will be our God, that God will be the one who is sovereign over us. God will be the one who is there to protect us. God will be there to rule and super rule over all of us uh, for his presence is there. But yes, God is telling us as our God that he will be our God and we will be his people and we have his commitment of care. Ah, the Bible says in Genesis, God told Abram, he said, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant uh, to be God to you and to your descendants after you. 
God is trying to establish a covenant with us. God is trying to establish an agreement with us that we will be his people and he will be our God. That we don't operate out of fear, but we operate out of faith that God is with us and God is for us. Uh, he goes on in Exodus and, and he says that I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Because see, God being our God, he brings us out of our bad situations because God has committed to being our God. He has brought his deliverance with us. I want you to understand, beloved, that God will not leave us nor forsake us. The situation might be bad, but God is still our God. Uh, the people of Israel turned their back on God. And God anointed Isaiah to preach prophetic doom upon the people of Israel. But when we get to this particular part of the text, there's a turnaround and, and God wants the people to understand that after all of this, I will still be your God. I will still be your keeper. And Isaiah goes on in chapter 43 and he says, but now thus said the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, God says, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be turned. You shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Beloved, I want you to know that even in the midst of this pandemic, God looks at you as special. God looks at you with a heart of compassion. God looks at you with love in his heart because you are his. It's a good thing to be called the Lord's today. For we are God's children and God, just like any father or mother, has a special kind of love for his children. Yes, we as God's children go through pains just like everybody else. But we have a father that we can lean on. We go through hurts and sorrows just like everybody else, but we have a mother that we can call on. Our God sees us as his very own. Some of us know how people can be. People will uh, write you off when you, when you turn your back on them. But God is a God of another chance. God is a God who has love and compassion for his children. Some of us have uh, done some people wrong and, and we never got a chance to go back and make it right. But thanks be to God that he gave us a chance to repent. I'm so glad today that some of us that have fallen short of God's glory, that God didn't decide to throw us away. I like what Marvin Sapp says. He said he saw the best in me when everyone around me could only see the worst in me. And he goes on to say that he is mine and I am his. It doesn't matter what I did. He only sees me for who I am. Yes, I've made mistakes. Yes, I've fallen short, but he sees me as his child. And that's the reason that we're here today. And that's the reason that we don't have to fear because we are God's and he is ours. Yet not only is God's presence with us and God is our God, but we also get a commitment of action from God. God tells us the third reason that we don't have to fear, the, the third reason that we can overcome fear. God says, I will strengthen you. Amen. I will strengthen you, beloved. I know that so many of us, uh, you know, as Baptists, we believe that God is the three O's, that God is omniscient, meaning God knows all. And God is omnipresent, meaning God can be everywhere. But God is also omnipotent, meaning that God is all powerful. And I know we think about the strong God and the almighty God that we serve. But in the text, God is trying to tell us 
that God will strengthen us. Not only do we just operate with the power of God, but God is giving us our own strength to endure in the situation. God is going to strengthen us for our own maturity. God is going to strengthen us that we might be made better from the situations. God is going to strengthen us through all of the tough times that we go through. God is going to strengthen us through all of the rough times. For we know that all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. God is trying to strengthen us. He's trying to improve us. He's not going to just leave us as babes in Christ, even as we walk through this rocky terrain. But God is showing us that we can do more. Ah, Again, I remind you that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but God has given us power. Yes, even when the Holy Spirit came upon them in the upper room in Acts, uh, they said that ye shall have power when the Holy Spirit comes. I'm glad that God has invested strength and power into his people. Uh, when, when racism comes against us, we shall still have God's power. Uh, when misogyny comes against us, we shall still have power. When all of the, the, the fiery darts of the world come against us, we still have God's power. Yes, uh, David talked about it in Psalm uh, 27. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And because of that, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Ah, uh, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Uh, though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war might rise against me, in this will I be confident, because God has given his people strength. Uh, Isaiah goes on in chapter 40, and he deals with this same thing because Israel is being scattered at this particular point and the nation is in disarray. But God wants to remind them that he wants to give them power. Uh, in chapter 40 of Isaiah, he says, Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. He gives power to the faint. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Beloved, I want you to understand that there is no power outside of what you can get from God. Uh, you might think that you're young and you're hot right now, but baby, that won't sustain you. The only way that you can make it through this is with the strength of God. I want you to understand, beloved, that God has invested strength into his people. But not only that, God goes on to say, I will help you. God has given us his commitment to help us. He's given us his presence. He has given us his commitment to be our God. He says, I will strengthen you. But he goes on to say, I will help you. I like what that old hymn writer said, that there's no other help I know. Uh, he said, you know, you just reach your hand out to the Father because that's the only one that you can lean and depend on. Uh, David talks about it in Psalm 40. He says, but I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. I'm glad that God still has us on, on his mind. And he says, you are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, oh my God. He goes on in Psalm 46 and reminds us that God has committed to be our friend. That God has committed to be our refuge. He says God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. That ought to be somebody's testimony today. That God was a very present help in my trouble. When I was down and out, God was a present help. When I was in, uh, lost in a situation in the courtroom, God was my help. 
When I was sick in my body, God was a present help. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. God was my help in the worst of my situations. So for that, we give God praise. We thank God that he has committed to be our help. And no matter what the situation might be, we continue to look to God. We're not looking to the TV. We're not looking to the president. We're not looking to any of the armies of the world. We're looking only for our help to come from God. Yes, we look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Because our help comes from the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and of earth. God is our help. Uh, but not only that, beloved, finally, God goes on from just giving us his presence. God goes on from committing to be our God. God says that I will strengthen you. I will help you. But finally, beloved, God says, I will uphold you. Yes, I'm glad today that God will uphold us with God's victorious right hand. Uh, to uphold us means that God will sustain us. It, it, it means that God will keep us fast. It, it means that God will help us. It also means that God will follow us close. Yes, I'm so glad today that God will sustain us because we are a people who have fallen short. We are a people who get weak sometimes. We're a people who get weary sometimes, and we just need God to prop us up on every leaning side. As a matter of fact, I like the way God has set the example when the Israelites were fighting against the Amalekites. Uh, God uh, empowered uh, some people to help uh, be his hands and uphold the children of Israel. So when they were fighting the Amalekites, they said as long as Moses' hands were lifted up, the Israelites would, would be in victory. But when Moses' hands lowered, the Amalekites would be victorious. So they went out to battle, and Joshua did as Moses told them, and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. The Bible says, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the sun set. Beloved, I don't know if you have somebody on your left side and somebody on your right side physically there. But beloved, I want you to understand that you have a God who's here to uphold you. He's willing to uphold you with his victorious right hand. I don't know what your situation might be. I don't know what you might need victory over today. But God has committed to uphold you with his victorious hand. Ah, uh, Somebody here today might be struggling with the, body, with the bottle. But God wants to uphold you. You might be struggling and you seem like defeat might come in your life on the job front. You seem like everything might be unstable and your money is strange and you, and you, you can't keep money in your pocket. But God wants to uphold you. You don't seem like you're going to be able to keep on going and keep on making it and you want to give up. But God wants to uphold you. I don't care if the debts are high and your payment is low. God wants to uphold you. God wants to deliver you. But God has committed all of this to us. God has given us his presence. He's committed to be our God. He's committed to give us strength. He is committed to be our help, and God has committed to uphold his children. But, beloved, I want you to understand that God has gone a little bit further than what this prophecy could even see. Because when the wages of sin were stacked against us, and we couldn't keep ourselves going, and there was no way of us paying the debt, they would slaughter lambs year after year and, and service after service so that they could try to have some kind of series of atonement. But God knew that the debt was too high and sin, sinfulness had brought mankind down to the bottom. 
But God decided that he wanted to uphold his people. God decided that he wanted to sustain his people. So God got himself up from the seat of the Godhead. God decided to empty himself into a human, into human form. God decided that he would come down through 42 generations. God decided that he wanted to uphold his people because of the great love that he has for us. God decided to uphold us and come down here and show us how to walk, show us how to talk, show us how to treat each other. God decided that he would come down and uphold his children. Anybody here, was God might have found you in a pit and you felt like there was no way out. God decided to lift you up. Amen. I'm glad today, like that old testimony says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. It was God's love that lifted me. Anybody uh, out there can testify? God's love lifted me. God's love uh, upheld me. God's compassion. It's the only reason I'm here. So I thank God that he came down to walk this rocky terrain. I thank God that Jesus came down to be spat upon. Jesus came down to be rebuked and scorned. Jesus came down to be talked about and mistreated just for preaching the gospel. I'm so glad today that he did all of that to uphold us. I'm glad today that he bucked against the system that he might show them how their wayward ways. I'm glad that he went up Golgotha's hill. Even though he had no sin of his own, he took my sin and your sin and became your God and my Savior. Hallelujah for the price that he paid. I'm so glad today that he did all of that just to uphold his children, just to sustain his children because of the great love that he has for all of us. I'm so glad today that he endured the, the nails in his side. I'm so glad that he endured nails in his hand and a crown of thorns on his head. I'm so glad that the blood came streaming down his body just to uphold his children. I'm so glad that when we fell short that God still had compassion in his heart. Ah, when, when the price was, was too high for us, I'm so glad that Jesus paid the price on Calvary's cross and shed his blood for the remission of our sins. I'm so glad that he gave up his ghost and died on a Friday and stayed dead all night Friday and all day Saturday. But early on the third day, he got up with all power in his hands, redeeming power, Holy Ghost power, love power, deliverance power. God did all of that just to uphold his children. That ought to be somebody's celebration today. I might not be much, but be much, but my God still loves me. Uh, it might seem like everything is hopeless around me, but my God still loves me. It might seem like I don't have any way to go, but God is a way maker. God loves his children. Amen. God loves you. So be not afraid. Do not fear, for God is with you. God is our God. Amen. And God says, I will strengthen you. God says, I will help you. And God says, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Amen. Beloved, you might not feel like... Um, you're the best Christian. You're the best follower of God. But we want you to give your life to God right now. Amen. Oh, yeah. That fear ha that has been gripping us, give it to God. And have the trust that God will be our keeper, that God will be our sustainer. That's what God wants from us today, that we trust in the Lord. We need to make that commitment. If we just trust God, he'll continue to fight our battles. He'll continue to be with us. He'll continue to be our sustainer. If we just trust him, the doors of the church are open. If there is anyone who 
is sick of being living in fear. You want to be able to trust God who is able to keep you. Come even now. I will be with you. That's what God says. I will be with you. I will be with you if you will only trust me, trust me, trust me. I'll never leave you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. If you will only trust. Trust me, trust me, trust me, I'll fight your battles, I'll fight your battles. I'll fight your battles if you will only trust me, trust me, trust me. Amen. Let us look to the Lord that we might be dismissed. Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you. That through this pandemic, that we can trust on, in you, that we can depend on you because you still hear our prayer. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for committing to strengthen your people. Thank you for being our help. Thank you for upholding your children. For we are weak and fallible, but... Lord God, you sustain us. Amen. We are weak, Lord God, and we fall short, but you strengthen us. Thank you, Lord God, that even though we walk through this pandemic and we are careful, but we still don't have to live in fear. We are careful, Lord God, but we're still full of faith. We're careful, Lord God, but fear and anxiety don't take over our mind. We're careful, Lord God. We wear our mask and wash our hands and encourage safety around us. But we still lean and depend on you to keep us. Because all healing comes from you. Thank you, Lord God, for your healing. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for your compassion. Thank you for your love. We love you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We magnify you and we lift you up. And we thank you for calming our fears. That we might live with peace. That we might live with trust in our hearts. Thank you for all that you are and all that you do. May the love of God and the grace of the Son and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with you, both now and forevermore. And the people of God said amen, 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 and amen. God bless you. And we'll see you next Sunday. Next Sunday at 10 a.m., worshiping in fellowship with the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church.